All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, yeah, hey everyone again. Thank you for joining us here today again. Um, again, my name is Kwana Yazi. My Deshkiz initial national. I am one of the professional writing tutors here at the, the Net College Learning Center. So, welcome to again. I think this is our sixth or seventh session of Finals Countdown, and today's session with uh, Ernest, he'll actually be going over fractions for Math 102. So. I'll go ahead and shift it off to him. And then at the very end, we'll uh, go ahead and give you guys the evaluations and then um, I'll talk about the gift cards again and stuff like that. So um, yeah, go ahead, Ernest. All right, thank you, Kwana. All right, can everybody see my PowerPoint? All right, so I have my PowerPoint here that I'll be going over. Um, like Kwana said, it's over the fractions. My name is Ernest Hildreth and I'm one of the professional math tutors here at Chinling. Uh, my clients are Tachini, Kiaani, Naikarina, and Naikarina. And I am from Mini Farms. So now let's begin. So fractions. So I came up with this PowerPoint and we'll be covering quite a bit of things dealing with fractions. Um, fraction notation, one and zero, um, the different types of fractions. There's proper fractions, improper fractions, and mixed fractions. And then addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and a small amount of information on conversion. So fractor, fraction notation um, requires the number being between, it can be found between whole numbers. The numerator is usually the top of the fraction and the denominator is the bottom of the fraction. So as you can see here, we have the top of five sevenths. The five is the numerator and the seven is the denominator. All right, so one and zero in fraction notation. One in fraction notation has that a number over a number will equal to one. So if you have five over five, that would equal to one. This would work for any whole number that is not zero. So at the bottom, we have a few examples. Like I said, five over five, three over three, 27 over 27, 357 over 357. These fractions would equal to one. So if you were to divide the number into itself, it would equal to one. Zero in fraction notation, we have zero over a number and it would equal to zero. For any number, for any whole number, that in is not zero. So we have the examples of zero over one, zero over nine, zero over 27, and zero over 1,348. So those would equal to zero. The reason being that if you have zero at the bottom, it won't be defined, it'd be undefined. It would come up as an error in your calculators if you still use scientific notation calculators or graphing calculators, it will come up like that. So proper fractions. Proper fractions have the smaller number above the larger number or in this case, the numerator is smaller than the denominator, as you can see in my example here. So you can see that three fifths, the three is smaller than the denominator, which is five, and five is the larger number. And I have a couple of examples over here, one half, one fourth, and three fourths. 
Improper fractions. Improper fractions have a larger numerator over a smaller denominator. So that would mean the top number is larger than the bottom number. As you can see with the nine fifths, the nine is higher than the bottom number, five. So you can usually see this as an improper fraction. And that can be also written as a mixed numbers. So it has a whole number part of the fraction. That's what a mixed number is. Um, some examples that we have are two and five fourths. So you can see that we have the two as the whole number and the five fifths as the fraction. And this is a visual representation of the fraction. We have two circles here. We have the blue shaded in, and that is represented by the number one and three out of the four. So you can see that the circles are divided into fourths and the shaded portion is represented in the mixed number as one and three fourths. And we have the last example as being four and one seventh. Okay, so simplifying. Simplifying requires the reduction of the fraction to its simplest form. As you can see from my example, I have 90 over 84 and we break it down. So we have nine times 10 over four times 21. And we break it down to the simplest form, which is two times three times three times five over two times two times three times seven. So if you multiply those out, you'll get the 90 over 84. So as you can see, I color coded it here that we would require to simplify the fraction. So the simplest form that we have, I colored in the two and three as it would for being one over one and those would be canceled out as into one. And the ones that are left in black will be used in our fraction. So like I said, we have the two over two as being one and then the three over three as one. So those being multiplied would leave the three times five. Over the two over seven. So our cancellation of the ones, and we still have the fractions here. So it'd be 15 from the three times five and 14 from the two times seven. And off to the right, I have another example, um, 24 over 60. So it's broken down into the simplest form of two times two times two times three, and then two times two times three times five. So here they canceled out the numbers. For every one that's on the top, there's one on the bottom that was canceled out. So the first set of twos, the second set of twos, and the set of threes there, those were canceled out. And you were left with the two and five, so that would give you two fifths. So 24 over 60, the simplification would equal to two fifths. Reciprocals. Okay, so the top number, the numerator, and the bottom number, the denominator, are going to be switched. So it gives you a reciprocal. So off to the right, I have a fraction of one half. 
the reciprocal would have the numerator and denominator switch. So as you can see, one went to the bottom and two went to the top, and that's the reciprocal. And my other examples are five, six. So the reciprocal of that is six fifths. And we have a negative number here being 17 over three. So you would switch those around and you would have three over 17. And whole numbers also have reciprocals. The exception to this rule is zero because zero times a number would have to equal one, but any number multiplied by zero is the number zero itself. So an example, um, zero would have to have a reciprocal of zero over a number and you can't divide zero by a number and it would give you an undefined term. So on to reciprocals, what would the reciprocals of 2b or 3 or 10? So you can answer in the chat. So I'll give you a few seconds to give this some thought. What would the reciprocal of a whole number be? if we have the examples of two, three, and 10. Okay, I'm getting some answers on the chat. Oh, one half, one third, and one tenth. All right, so you would be correct. So when you have a whole number, it is usually over one, but we don't see that with um, whole numbers. If you write it as a fraction, you would, so you would have two over one and the reciprocal would be one over two. And the same thing would go with three and 10. So that is correct as being one half, one third and one tenth. So now on to the next section of addition. So when we talk about adding fractions, um, one being that if the denominators are the same, they follow a set of rules. You would add the top numbers, the numerators. You would keep the bottom name numbers the same, uh, then the denominators. And then if you would simplify if you can. So for example, we have one fifth plus three fifths. As you can see, we take the top three and one, we add them to get four and the denominator, the bottom number stays the same of being five. So your answer would be four fifths. The next example is two thirteenths plus eight thirteenths. So again, we follow the rule, add the top numbers, the numerators, two plus eight equals 10. Keep the bottom numbers, the denominator is the same, which is 13, it stays the same and we simplify it. Since there's no need, we leave it as is. So our, ten, our answer is 10 thirteenths. And off to the side, we have uh, an example of two ninths plus five ninths equals seven ninths. So now, if the denominators are different, you would find the least common multiple of the denominators or the least common denominator, which is represented by LCD. 
and then you would multiply by one, being the number over the same number again. Um, you would add the top numbers, the numerators, and then if possible, simplify. So for the example on the side, I have two fifths plus one fourth. So you would take the bottom numbers, the denominators, five and four, you would multiply them to see if you can get a least common denominator, which is 20. So following the next part, multiply by one. So we know that we have the whole number being one. So four over four. So you would have two times four, and then you would have five times four. Five times four gives us 20. So we would use the four in the shape of being four over four as being one to the first fraction. In the second fraction, we have one fourth times five over five. So again, we still need the denominators to be the same. We have four times five. So five being the one, the number five over five for one. And then we multiply them out. We have two times four being eight. Five times five is 20. And five times one is five. Four times five is 20. Now that our denominators are the same, we only add the top numbers. So eight plus five equals 13. All right, um, subtraction follows the same sort of rules. Um, if the denominators are the same, you follow the same principle. You would subtract the top numbers, the numerators, keep the bottom numbers, the denominators, and simplify if possible. So I have the example being 5 ninths minus 3 ninths, since they have the same denominators of being 9. We only use the top numbers. So 5 subtract 3 equals 2, and our denominator is 9. So 2 ninths is our answer. The next example is 9 twelfths minus 5 twelfths. So 9 subtract 5 is 4. Our denominators stay the same. And to simplify, we would cancel out 4 from the top and the bottom, and we would have 3 fourths. So I have an example again of 17 20th minus 5 20th. And you would subtract 17 by 5 and get 12 over 20. So if you have different denominators, you would find the least common multiple of the denominators or the LCD of the least common denominator. Multiply by one or a number over the same number. Subtract the top numbers, the numerators, and simplify if possible. So for the example, I have two fifths subtract one fourth. We would try to find the least common denominator, which would be 20, four times five. Those are the denominators, the bottom numbers here. So you would multiply by one, that being four over four and five over five. So two fifths times four over four, and then you would do the same for the one fourth, which is being multiplied by five over five. So two times four is eight, five times four is 20. That gives us our 
8 over 20 for the first one. For the second one is 1 times 5. And 4 times 5, we get 5 over 20. Now that we have the same denominators, we would just use the numerators to finish out the problem. So 8 minus 5 is 3. And since the denominators are the same, you would keep 20. So 3 over 20 is our answer. Multiplication. So you begin with multiplying the numerators, the numbers on the top, and then by the denominators and reduce the fraction if necessary or simplify if possible. So off to the side, I have an example of two fifths times three fourths. So you multiply the top numbers or the numerators, two and three, that gives you six. Multiply the denominators, five and four. So four and five multiplied would give you 20. And since we have six over 20, we try to reduce the answer um, if necessary. So six over 20, we divide both by two and we get three tenths as our answer. Okay, so I have an example on six sevenths times five thirds. I'll give you some time to work that out and see if you can answer in the chat box. Okay, I have some answers coming on in the chat box. I'll give it a few more seconds. And then we also have 40 times seven eighths. So I'll give you some time to work on that problem too. Okay, so for the first one, six sevenths times five thirds, you would work out the problem of factoring the numbers to see how, if you could simplify. So six times five would be two times three times five. And then we have the numer, uh, denominators, the bottom numbers being seven times three. So in the second set, we have three over three. We cancel out the threes and we're left with two times five over seven, which give us 10 sevenths for the first answer, for the first problem. All right, so for the second one, Working it out, we have 40 times 7 eighths. So we take the reciprocal to make it a fraction. We have 
40 times 7 and then 1 times 8. So we break up 40 into 5 times 8, multiply that by 7. We still have the denominators of 1 times 8. As you can see, we have the set of 8s being able to be canceled out into 1. So we're left with 5 times 7 and 1. So the 8 cancels out and we have 35 over 1. Sorry about my mistake here. It's supposed to be a 1, not an 8. So the answer is 35. I like to thank those that answered in the chat box for answering and you were correct. Yes, simplified, it would be 35 at the bottom here. Division. So we have fractions that are going to be divided by another fraction and you're going to invert or flip them. An example would be two thirds when you flip that one, it becomes three halves. And then you continue by multiplying the fraction. So off to the right, I have an example of the fraction that you invert and then you're dividing by. So we have four fifths divided by two thirds, which is equal to being four fifths times three halves. You multiply the numerators and then the denominators. So four times three is 12 and then five times two is 10. All right, you can simplify the fraction into a mixed number because 10 can go into 12 one time and you have a remainder of two be two tenths, but that can also be simplified down to being one fifth because two divided by two is one, 10 divided by two is five. That's how you would simplify it down to one fifth. So you can convert improper fractions into mixed as you saw from our last example. You divide the numerator by the denominator. divide until you have a remainder and the remainder becomes the numerator. So as you can see, I gave the example of 15 over seven. You divide the numerator, the top number by the bottom number. So 15 divided by seven, seven can go into 15 two times, which is 14, two times seven, 14. You subtract, you have a remainder of one. Seven cannot go into one. So you have that being two as your whole number and one your remainder becomes the numerator over the denominator, which is seven. So that would be two and one seventh. And here at the end, you can also convert fractions into decimals and into percentages. So you can take the fraction, divide it by the denominator and get a decimal. And then you can also multiply that decimal by 100 and get a percentage. So to convert from a percentage to a decimal or a decimal to a fraction, you would start off with the percentage, divide by 100, 
you get the decimal to convert from decimal to fraction. You go here. So one half is your numerator and denominator. And you would just need to divide one by two and you would get 0.5. And from 0.5, you can multiply by 100 and you get 50, that'd be 50%. So do we have any questions? because that is the end of my presentation, unless anybody has any questions. So I think we're um, pretty much done here, huh? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so if anyone doesn't have any other questions, we can go ahead and uh, wrap up this session. So thank you all for attending uh, this session as well. So I'll go ahead and have Audrey post the evaluation. And again, the evaluation is crucial to, you know, counting your participation in these uh, sessions. So we do see some returning people coming. So. Um, thank you for joining us. So the evaluation will be posted and then uh, we'll go ahead and just turn in the evaluation. You'll be counted towards the gift card giveaway, which will be, which we will be having drawn until the end of finals countdown, which is next week. So yeah, just a reminder at three o'clock, we have um, a presentation for writing, which is uh, showcasing engaging with sources in writing. And I'll be taking over that session again um, it was supposed, to, it was originally supposed to be Zangia Begay, but um, well, she's actually not here today. So uh, I'll be taking over that presentation at three o'clock. So um, yeah, so if you guys ha don't have any other questions, we can go ahead and end it at that. And just don't forget your evaluations. Yeah, thank you guys.